my name is Lily. My partner's name is Alan, and we worked on resourcing of coal ash waste in order to form decarbonized infrastructure materials. So I think it's important to provide some context, and most of our data came from the Energy Information Administration, or the EIA, and they have tons of data on coal consumption starting in 1972 to the modern day, but we were mainly focused on coal fly ash data. This is important because this is essentially what can be recycled into decarbonized infrastructure materials, something that has been under greater interest due to the, the threat of climate change. Our main goal was creating a machine learning model that is able to predict chemical and elemental properties of coal and resultant coal ash. This is important because the elemental composition dictates if it can be recycled. If it has kind of el comparable elemental composition to similar building materials, then they'd be in the clear. This is some of the methods, and this is kind of a chronological depiction of our project, looking at data cleaning, missing value analysis, time series analysis, and machine learning approach, which we'll talk about further within this presentation. For data cleaning, we started with a bunch of Excel files from the EIA from 1972 to 2022. And in order to facilitate analysis, you wanted to standardize them, giving them consistent headers, D types, et cetera. For missing value analysis, upon analyzing our data, we found holes in our data in the 1980s and the 2000s. And so in order to form proper conclusions, generate our machine learning model, we had to remediate this using missing value ratios and fill in those values. Just so let us let me mention before our final goal is trying to predict a machine build a machine learning model to predict chemical properties of coal ash waste. Um, however, it's really important to give a time series analysis check if the uh, trend or like the overall uh, value of the coal ash chemical properties remain constant over the course of fifty years, because our model is conditioned on that the hypothesis that um. In, over the course of 50 years, the chemical properties, including average heat, average sulfur, um, or other chemical properties, properties remains pretty constant. That means that we should we can we can just not handle that case separately. However, if that displays a very different trend or like non-stationary or weird trend, our model can no, not handle that kind of special cases, which make the prediction accuracy very low. So we do have to do time series analysis check to uh, figure out for which region and for which um, period of time uh, the trend is not stationary. And then we have to pick out pick out that special case and let us our model to handle those, those cases separately to actually boost up our um, prediction accuracy and as well as the, uh, the correctness of our model. Uh, for example, in this graph, the graph shows the kind of a non- non-stationary trends starting from 1980 to like 2010. And for so, for example, for this region and from 1980 to 2010, we do have to do, pick up this scenario separately and let us model to know that this uh, period of time is not stationary and we cannot uh, let us model just assume that we can apply our model in this period of data. Um, so uh, after we figure out the trend, we do have to use some external data set to validate the trend that we find just for the sanity check, as well as to corroborate that the trend is actually real so that we can uh, consolidate and um, finally make our, our machine learning or deep learning model that we're gonna build in the future have a, to have a very high um, prediction accuracy. Thank you.